All right. With the first people uh, already here, maybe um, we can start a bit early because there's a lot of content to get through. Mm -hmm. All right. So welcome, everyone, to the report of the working groups. The working groups are a really important part of KDE, EV, and they help the EV do work on really important topics. Um, we have several of those working groups, and they will now talk a bit about uh, their work over the last year. And we will start with Thomas, who will talk about the community working group. Hello, hello. Yeah, can you? Yes, thank you very much. So basically, the community working group is the people that you will try to talk to if something wrong is happening, or if somebody is annoying you, or if there is any kind of firefight, or if people are not actually following the code of conduct, or if you basically just want a shoulder to cry on for a bit. We are good shoulders. We can listen. Uh, but 2020 was really tough on a lot of people. And sometimes it was because of KD, sometimes it was because of the word sex, sometimes it was because Corona, and sometimes, no, sometimes just happened. And when you can't really be around people, things will get bad. We are, we are beings, we are social beings. We like to use social networks, we like to use Twitter, and we are social. Problem is, we couldn't be as social as we wanted on this year. So a lot of people started to misbehave. And because of that, we had to actually remove, and this was one of the first instances that we actually had to remove a blog from the planet because of misbehavior. The second blog that we removed from the planet was not because of misbehavior, but because of the person's request, so that does not really count. Um, the same blog that we removed from the KD planet, we had to also remove, we asked them to remove from the free desktop as the free desktop foundation. I don't remember the name of the planet, just free desktop something, because of the same violations. And we had a severe case of incidents on Telegram because of a rogue administration. Um, someone was not feeling well, and he had a problem. And the problem was really intense for him, and he started to lash out on people. Problem is that because Telegram is Telegram, we could not do anything. We could not remove ownership. We could not even talk to Telegram. They basically ignore. And this went on for more than three months with threats, real threats. In the end, he moved on. Um, our work in the past year was a lot of people started to commit to master without using merge requests. Please don't do that. This is not nice to your fellow developer. And when that happened, code was started to be reverted without approval or reviews. So like, also, please don't do that. Talk to people, communicate. It will be better if people communicate. And code being refused for QT4 compatibility. People, QT4, it's 10 years old, and we don't have any kind of update from the Qt company. Let Qt4 die, please. It's time to let the past go. Lesson learned. Well, we can count on the communities, even non KD communities. We can count on Gnome, we can count on the free desktop, and they will help us. Uh, I had a few meetings with Gnome talking about the code of conduct, talk about how to deal with um, communities. Uh, this also happened with the free desktop. But we also realized that we can't count on Telegram's management. They basically ignored everything that we tried to talk to them. And we cannot ignore red flags. If we see a red flag, talk to us, because red flags tends to grow. Please, next. And we have two new members. One was just recently, and I haven't updated the community working group slides. So we have Bavisha, who is now a proud community working group member, and she already started on handle cases. And we also have David Edmundson, 
that is now also a proud community work group member and he already didn't start to handle cases because we haven't got a case for him yet, which is awesome. Next. And we are Babisha Tomas Valoiri. That's a typo there because I always mistype her name and she says that she likes it, so I kept it. And David Edmondson, so four. We still need more people that can handle stress, but I think four people is good enough for the moment. And we are the community working group. Please talk to us if you need a shoulder or if you just want to talk or if you have a complaint. This is our remain. Thank you, Thomas, and thank you, community working group. And with that, I hand over to Olaf. Yeah, hello, I'm presenting about the KDE Free Qt Foundation. The KDE Free Qt Foundation is a legal construct created by KDE and Trolltech. And, and, and so it, it has been around many, many years now. It ensures that Qt will always be available as free software. KDE has two representatives in the foundation. And since last academy, the two representatives are supported by a working group. Um, during the past year, the main topic was the decision of the Qt company to limit long-term support releases to paying customers. The legal agreements that we have require that the Qt company um, open source all Qt releases after one year. So for KDE, of course, the main question was, what do we do in the meantime for a supporting Qt 5? We decided to tackle this question not through the foundation itself, because it's not mainly a legal question. Um, instead, it was mainly the KDE EV board working on it um, together with volunteers from the FreeQt working group. And now I hand over to Frederick Gladhorn, who will now talk about this working group a bit more. Thanks, yeah. So thank you, Olaf. It's awesome, all the work you've been putting in together with Martin. Uh, maybe we just go to the next slide. I just want to say who we are, uh, not uh, talk too much about uh, things happening in the background. Um, yeah, we have Martin Konold and Olaf, who just uh, presented the FreeCute uh, Foundation. Um, and of course, they are part of the working group because we are there to support them. And then there's Albert, uh, Chris, David, Eike, and me. Um, yeah, hopefully you know some of us. Uh, we have been around for a while and we, of course, do care about uh, Qt and uh, KDE. So uh, we are there to support the Free Qt Foundation. Um, we discuss various issues. Uh, we, um, yeah, while our interest is not always 100% aligned with what the Qt company does, we try to find good solutions. We look at technical things like, OK, what is actually changing Qt 5 to 6? Do we have to be aware of changes? Is there something missing or so? And um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, we tried to inform the uh, KDEV membership a bit, and Olaf uh, took the last two points here. So I think we can just move on. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Frederick, Olaf, and everyone else who is helping us um, ensure that Qt stays free software and available to KDE. And then let's go to Bushan and the sysadmin working group. Hello. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. Uh, so we are basically looking after the servers and various services of KDE. Uh, so we have so some of the data points. So in this month, um, when this presentation was written, it was April month. Uh, so there are 40 terabytes of data in April month. Uh, One ninety web requests per second on average, and uh, some of our fronting servers like CDN17, 7, and Cloudflare handles some of more requests. And we have almost 500,000 emails per week, every week. Uh, so we have uh, four members right now, Ben, Nicholas, myself, and Candy. And there are some members who are uh, who are involved in uh, handling some specific servers and systems. Next slide. Uh, so we uh, uh, one of the very major 
thing we did, did this year was uh, deployment of MyKD. So it's a complete replacement. Well, not complete yet, just yet, but it is intended to be replacement of our KDE identity, which is like, uh, it's a pain, major pain point right now. And so, yeah, uh, that is based on O2 and uh, newer MyKDE already handles uh, login for several services like wikis, uh, academic sites, and things like that. Uh, next slide. Uh, we also improved several services, like uh, we changed our meter management software. Uh, we That brought some more uh, improvements because the meter brain was pretty much uh, outdated slash out of support. Um, and at the same time, we also deployed Tyrex for maps.kd.org. Thank you, Walker, for help on this. And uh, yeah, so this also makes it possible to use higher quality vector-based maps on clients like Marble or KD itinerary. Uh, next slide. Uh, we also tried to uh, basically uh, get rid of some of the services and uh, try to consolidate various things. Uh, so we uh, remove, we basically uh, put some of the server, some of the Python and Ruby applications on the single server. We also got rid of a Keto Lite instance, which was basically only for getting neon repositories and also ported our Git hooks to Python 3 because why not? Who uses Python 2 anymore? Uh, next. Uh, we also upgraded several of systems. Uh, uh, the upgrade happens by having a totally new server and basically setting it up instead of like just upgrading some servers in place. Uh, and some of the servers are replaced this, this way. Uh, the more details of this are in the reports we, written reports we have sent on KAB membership mailing list. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so there are some topics where we need help. Um, they are on the next slide. Uh, so yeah. So one of the key goals we want to achieve next year is uh, introduction of GitLab CI to replace both page.kd.org and binary factory and also sort out our situation regarding collaborative editors on circuit.org because it is using LDA as a backend right now and its performance is pretty brutal. So we need to figure out replacement and sort out situation. And this also involves that we need to upgrade our next cloud, which requires a newer server and because like for example, Nextcloud wants uh, newer libraries, so we want something like open to 24 servers. So there are three topics right now, but surely we do have more topics. Uh, you can reach us in KDC's admin channel, or you can also ping us in private if you have any questions. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you, Bushan. That's a ton of stuff. Really cool. Thank you for doing all of that. And then I hand over to Neil Fritos for the advisory board working group. Thank you, Lydia. Can I go to the next slide, please? Thank you. So the advisory goal has the goal of ensuring good relationships between KDE and all our important partners. And we also represent the collaboration in general with this organization and other communities that are part of our uh, board. Next slide, please. So as you can see, there are many people of us. There's a board people like Adrian, Aleish, Lydia, myself, and Nike, but we also have on board Cornelius, David, Kai, and Thomas, who are our contacts to many of the organizations that are part of the board. Next slide. What uh, our tasks are? Uh, first of all, we organize uh, advisory board calls to make sure all our organizations stay close to us. They are updated about what's currently happening within our community and our products, and that we have a chance to communicate with each other, both the 
the KDEV and the partners, but also the partners between them, so they can compose, discuss on topics and exchange knowledge. Um, we also act as contact persons for the members of the IKEA advisory board. These include our IKEA patrons and also all the allied communities and NGOs within our ecosystem that can be part of our advisory board. Um, we are available for all the advisory board members for any input and questions from these organizations in regard to KDE, and we're also responsible for getting them in touch with the KDE projects, projects or contributors that might help them on specific topics or if they have, have specific questions that they need answers to. So to share some updates that happened since the previous academy, we held one advisory board call on in January earlier this year. Our many topics including uh, included the outcome of our two major events, Academy and LANS, that this year they were taking place for the first time online. So we had our whole experience and lessons learned uh, from these events to share. We had all the updates on the CUT that uh, the KDF Foundation on the uh, board already mentioned at uh, the working group. We had the updates from our goal. We have many developments in KDEV, and also we had many new partners to share. So we discussed a bit on all those topics. Um, we also brought up the discussion about making a living around KD. This is something that other organizations in our network are doing, but in parallel. So there was a lot of discussion there, knowledge to be exchanged, and we're still trying to figure out things on our end with the help of our partners. Um, so in terms of our uh, plans for 2021, we also discuss um, all the uh, new events that we have coming up. The academy that is happening now, last that took um, place a couple of weeks ago, and of course the KD's 25th birthday that we want to celebrate in a very major way. Uh, I think it's in October. Uh, I, another update is that we welcome a new advisory board member, uh, which is Pine64, uh, which is now a KD patron. And also very, very recently, it's not on the slides, Slimbook also uh, joined us as a patron. So we're very, very happy to have these two new hardware partners, which also say, uh, showcases our, let's say, commitment to increase those kind of partnerships. And our key goals uh, going forward for the next year, we want to at least hold one more call by the end of the year. This is one of our plan to hold at least two calls every year so we can stay in touch with our, our, our partners. Ideally, maybe we can hold another one by the end of the year so we can make it three this year. That would be great. Um, what we also want to do is start uh, poking on our contacts uh, more frequently because we have many issues coming up. As we mentioned, our organization is growing and we believe we have lots, lots of things to learn from partners that are already at uh, other stages of their growth. So we have experiences to share on policies and best practices on how to handle our hiring, how to manage our staff and contractors and all of those kind of topics. Uh, where we can draw information and knowledge from what our partners are doing. So if you if you want to join us or ask us something, feel free to reach out at the advisory board contacts at kde.org and we'll be happy to, to respond. I think that's all from us. Thank you. Thank you, Neil, for just um, Carl is unfortunately just now having computer problems, so we will skip ahead um, to the um, financial working group um, with ICA and get back to um, the fundraising working group after that. ICA. Yeah, hello. Um, we actually have a couple of new faces in the financial working group and we are immediately throwing them into the cold water and giving the first or rather the second slide after the title to Till Adam. So time to turn on your camera, I think. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> can you hear me at least? Yes, we can hear yeah. you. Okay. Very well, yeah. Lovely. Now you should be able to see me also. Hi there. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Till. I've, I started contributing to KDE 
uh, 19 years ago, so I'm looking forward to my 20 year anniversary. <laughs> uh, I used to contribute to KDE PIM, and lately I do suit stuff, so I didn't get to code. All right, the financial working group. Um, basically, what we do is we try and support uh, the membership, the community, and the board with uh, financial stuff because we have the misfortune of working in that kind of space try and contribute our experience there. So we help the treasurer, um, we help make decisions and suggestions to the board. Um, yeah, anything around numbers, commercial money. Um, we try to communicate to the community and to the outside around financial stuff. Uh, we help with the reports, obviously, that the treasurer does, and um, we maybe crucially help with the budget, um, which we will be talking about in a little bit. So next slide, please. Um, we've had a complete turnover uh, in the membership of this um, working group. Um, I think I think I was in the working group before, so <laughs> I'm kind of returning. Um, basically, um, yeah, myself and Marta are completely new. Um, Ike, of course, is still the treasurer, so he's he's part of the working group as as part of that. Um, Fitters is still around, but not in the working group anymore. Um, and I think David is still around for the purposes of this report, but will then be phasing out. Um, okay, I can. Yeah, um, before I take that slide, um, let me tell you thank you to, to everyone who was in the financial working group up until now. Daniela, David, your Fitters, you all um, did great work and helped very much. Um, David, I think, has decided, unfortunately, to move on to the community working group to spread his awesomeness there. I will very much uh, miss his um, colorful presentations of our colorful charts, but we get them one last time for now this year, so I look forward to that already. But yeah, 2020, um, we had um, quite a year, didn't we? Um, we originally um, had a budget plan, then we decided to kind of start over as things uh, were getting weird. We decided um, that we could decide a lot. So we decided to get more conservative as a result and uh, maybe not take as many risks as we otherwise might have. Um, overall, though, we came through it really, really well. Um, if anything, the pandemic largely um, simplified doing our finances because um, one of our largest financial activities is generally um, organizing and funding events and subsidizing travel towards them. Um, that really didn't happen in 2020, so overall there was much less to do. Um, our income sources remained stable or, in fact, improved. Um, our uh, one-time donations from just regular individuals and, and uh, other large contributors increased by around 40%, so people felt really generous. Um, I cannot explain why, really. It's um, quite fascinating. Either uh, we did just amazing work and people were more excited about KDE as a result, or people really wondered who might be hurting during the pandemic, um, who could I be helping, and decided um, KDE was worth their attention and love. In any case, um, thank you very much to all of our donors. We also received, um, on top of that, a very large one-time donation by the Handshake Foundation. Again, um, thank you to them as well. Um, what did decrease, unfortunately, is our income from the student uh, membership programs, that is Sum of Code and Code In, that um, we've done together with Google for many years. Um, this is not unexpected. Um, we've seen that trending down uh, year over year in terms of enthusiasm, our participation, and um, I think that is also even going beyond KDE towards other organizations who participate in these programs as well. Um, overall, our uh, financial assets once again grew in 2020. We have uh, more cash than ever, and we need to start spending it. And uh, now, however, a bit of a zoom in on the details. David? Charts! So, everything's generally been quite consistent, except for 2018, which was mental. In, in this current year, we've somewhat regressed back to your mean. If you don't include your big large one-time donation we actually did slightly worse than some of our previous years this is partly because we normally get a little bit more with academy which was a bit different last year but because we got that additional one-time donation we're still slightly up from the previous years except for 2018 which was mental next slide expenses 
We have massive reserves and every year we say we're trying to spend more than we earn because we're a non-profit, we shouldn't be earning a profit. And every year we fail. Again, this was partly because of Academy not really going exactly as intended. So we spent even less than we planned to and less than previous years because of it. And as I mentioned, we got more profit by accident. And if we look in detail, try and break it down. Income mostly came from these individual uh, donations and that massive one-time handshake donation. And all our other fundings are trending down from previous years. Expenses, primarily staff and contractors. And we'll see this is going to be taking up a large part of our expenditures moving forwards. All right, so as for the plan, we will of course try to yet again do a better job of spending money, <laughs> hopefully more successfully this time. Uh, the income is expected to remain stable. It has actually already been stable through uh, Q1. Uh, the main way of spending more money is to contract more. Uh, we can go into some detail about what that is. As you can see on the slide, it's Blauer Engel, it's uh, Krita and other things. Um, that is in the process of happening, so we're pretty confident that we can, in fact, spend that money <laughs> this year. Um, and overall, of course, we, as mentioned, have to spend money because um, we are a nonprofit and we can't be sitting on the money. So uh, we are yet again uh, expecting basically a stable situation with higher spending. Let's see how that plays out. Yep. Um, so, how has it been going so far this year? Um, it's always nice to do Academy in the middle of the year because um, then we can not just look back at 2020, but also some of the current year. Um, so far, things have been going really well. Um, as mentioned already in the board report, we gained two new payments this year. Um, They're both hardware companies, and that's, uh, that's quite interesting. Like uh, also mentioned previously, we see that kind of uh, relationship growing and expanding and happening more often in recent years. Also, for example, this year's Academy, we have a Remarkable as a new sponsor for the first time, who we'll also make an exciting Linux-based device. Um, so devices and embedded stuff um, around KDE keeps happening. That's quite exciting. We expect uh, further growth there in the future. Um, we also got a very large one-time donation by Pine64 in relation to their release of the PinePhone KDE Community Edition. Uh, thank you very much for that. Um, in general, donation income remains stable and also turns up. We've seen about a 10% improvement across um, almost every type of donation in the first quarter. Um, we have um, received most of the outstanding payments related to 2020 activities. Um, if you look very closely into the fine print of those charts um, that you just saw, um, one of the reasons why the income bar for um, 2020 was a little bit down uh, versus 2019 is that um, some payments were late that had to do uh, with when we invoiced them partially. Um, if you had added that outstanding income on top, you would have actually been slightly above the 2020, uh, 2019 bar. Unfortunately, we've received most of them by now. For example, the sponsorship proceeds from Linux App Summit uh, from that year. Um, so that's good. Um, travel expenditure has continued to be zero. We've not had any physical events, um, but uh, we may see that towards the end of the year, at least we're prepared for it. Um, so if any physical events uh, do happen this year still, then we might see some um, expenditure there. Um, hiring for the new contractor positions that uh, have been mentioned has progressed so far as planned. Um, we made a plan to um, create these positions all throughout the year and do them all at once. Um, we have uh, contracted two new folks to work on technical documentation and uh, documentation infrastructure um, in support of the KDE community already. And uh, we will be proceeding with the other hiring in the coming month. So 2022 is going to get um, interesting because uh, we expect um, at least um, a substantial uh, return to physical travel and physical events. 
and we will have all of these new contractors uh, and so we will see the combined effects of that and the combined effect on our expenses specifically which will be very high um, so 2022 will also be the year where we have to reevaluate our fundraising and uh, we have to make sure that what we are doing uh, can become sustainable for a longer term future so we have a lot to do in the financial working group next year and in the community as a whole but overall um, it's a really exciting place to be we've finally grown our resources um, to the point where we can you know dispatch and actually implement some of these new activities and um, yeah it's, it's, these are good problems to have really. so looking forward to doing the work next year all right and if you have any question i don't think we have time for that but um do ask them in the chat i can or we can as a group respond there as well thank you yeah please do ask questions in the chat and uh now we can go back to carl um for the uh, fundraising working group to um tell us how people can actually help us make all this um planning that the financial working group has done work Hi. We can't hear you yet, Carl, it seems. The computer gods do not like Carl today, it seems. Here's something I found. Carl, it seems that your mic is connected to the blue button, so it might be a system issue. Choose another mic or something. Um, no, did it work? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, so, um, hi everyone, uh, this is a report for the fundraising working group. Um, uh, the fundraising working group tried to um, fund uh, to fund uh, fundraising opportunities uh, to uh, uh, and uh, other maintains uh, our technical infrastructures around uh, the uh, donation systems, like, the, for example, the CVCRM, the relate.kd.org, and uh, the donation buttons everywhere on the KD web websites. And we tried to coordinate with uh, the pro team and for um, or, or fundraising company. Okay. Uh, so, who are we? Uh, we are uh, Kenny, uh, Lais, Nate, Scarlett, uh, me, and we have a new member this year, uh, Nicolo, and Andy. Um, what we did last year, uh, we uh, uh, worked with the CUCRM contractors, uh, the E8 new contractors, and tried to improve the infrastructures around the relay.kv.org. Uh, we also moved our communication to uh, from Telegram to Matrix. That makes me really happy. Uh, we had uh, multiple meetings at uh, on meet.key.org. Uh, we tried to make it uh, one month a month, but we didn't uh, achieve it uh, every month. Um, we also refreshed uh, the visual design of write.key.org and uh, the donate donation page in KV.org with a new cool design. And we also tweet to make it easier to uh, work on CVCRM with a Docker setup that everyone can clone and just run the commands and have a complete CVCRM setup ready. Uh, our plans for the future, near future, uh, we, are, we try to do the thing that you promised to do uh, last year, so the last three years. Uh, that means like seeing the uh, non-disclosure non act. Uh, so what, uh, because we are handling sensitive information like uh, the contact of uh, the donators and uh, 
be nice for an argument. I, I want to answer that. Yeah, we also try to uh, support the full reason effort for our Linux app to meet. Uh, goodies for people who, who donate for KDE in campaigns. And also improve the working group communication uh, to the outside. Uh, we also research and CV screen alternative uh, because we have some problems with uh, CV screen. It's hard to maintain and it's evolving really slowly. And we will try to work with the KDE EV board to, 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 to try to find the uh, uh, viable alternatives. Uh, and if you have suggestions, uh, please uh, contact us. I will quickly uh, appreciate that. And um, in terms of contacting us, uh, if you, we will also try to make it uh, easier for people to join us and uh, move to a public channel for the communication, for most of the communication, and uh, have a private matrix channel only for Keyword sensitive information. And we also try to keep uh, doing everything every first Sunday of the month at uh, 3 p.m. UTC. Uh, yes, uh, please like to be first. Uh, it is our uh, um, email address for the mailing list, and we will hopefully have soon a matrix room where you can join us. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. <laughs> all right. Um, you were all amazing and are done much quicker than I was expecting. That is very cool, uh, which means we have a tiny bit of time for Q&A um, if there are any questions. Adam. Yes, there are. And I just saw that Ike has already responded to one in the chat. Uh, Ike, do you want to reiterate that uh, question and answer here uh, live? or? <coughs> Skip to the next one. I can totally do that um, if you want. Um, so, <clears throat> sorry, the question was um, one that go to, I went out to all working groups, which is um, what is a thing that um, everyone can do to help the working groups be more effective. Um, for the financial working group, um, the main thing is really continue to do awesome, pro uh, awesome work in your KDE projects. Um, Anything that um, makes the public excited, um, you know, it helps with fundraising, which makes um, our work, I would say, more stress-free and more enjoyable. Um, it's uh, as you heard, spending money is not easy if you have it. Actually, it's it's quite difficult, but it's so much better than um, being strapped for it. So yeah, that that really helps the most. Um, the other thing is just um, we deal uh, with a lot of the um, KDEV's financial documents and bookkeeping. So anything that makes that easy and saves a little bit of time, like um, if you use re reimbursements.kd.org and um, you are really timely and, and good there on, on filing all your info and all your receipts, that helps. Um, if you send KDEV money via money transfer, writing a good memo, um, so it's easy to see um, what the transfer is about. These types of things really, you know, it um, makes some of the tedious work um, a little bit uh, more enjoyable. So, or a bit faster, at least. So, that helps. Yeah. Okay, thanks. That question was to all working groups. Yeah. So, I'll ask it again and uh, cool. then you can jump in as you want. So, what's a thing that the board, membership, or wider community can do to help your work or improve your effectiveness? I think for the FreeCute uh, support working group, uh, we mostly would benefit from somebody that can push us a bit to have regular meetings. We're all super busy and it's very easy to forget about this stuff uh, when life gets busy. So having somebody that uh, feels like they can just make sure that once a month we meet, uh, that would be awesome. We're mostly looking at people inside the KDE EV since we do uh, handle some sensitive information and we don't want to drag stuff out public unnecessarily when negotiations are ongoing. I think everybody understands that. Should I just pass on? Uh, who wants to be next? Carl, do you yeah, want to? Uh, let me just add to that for the KDE FreeCute Working Group. Um, given the wider picture, I think it's very, very helpful that so many KDE people are also involved in Qt project. And generally um, being visible about that, you know, um, using Qt is free software and contributing to Qt 
and using Qt um, with a commercial contract are not exclusive to each other. Make that visible that it's it can really be be um, a great cooperation where everyone finishes, uh, where everyone um, benefits. From our side, the advisory board, if you are in close contact with a fossil organization that could join and it will add value to our advisory board, please be in contact with them, see how we can cooperate. If you are close to maybe a corporation, get them to be patron, patrons. It will also help the fundraising working group and the financial working group, and then they can join again our, our advisory board and have all that knowledge in the board as well. So from the sysadmin side, I think uh, uh, it's mostly on the technical side. As I mentioned, like in the, my, in the last slide of our presentation, we outlined some of the issues. Uh, we also have a GitLab part where you can find our some of our tasks. And uh, so, yeah, you can jump on those tasks and help us. Uh from the fundraising group, uh, it's mostly about trying to find. Uh, and so, either help us solve or see serious problems, or help us find uh, viable alternatives to um, uh, CVCM. Yeah, I really starting to get a list of requirements and uh, alternatives that we could use, and we need to then decide of what to do next. Okay, if that was everyone, then I think it's uh, time to uh, switch over to the next one. Thank you very much all for joining, answering these questions and presenting the, the working groups uh, reports for, uh, for this year.